I think uh, sometimes, especially when the distance of history, we forget how hard-earned, how astounding that peace was at the moment. It shifted the political gravity in our world. It literally, it shifted the political gravity. In 1998, it was the longest-running conflict in Europe since the end of World War II. Thousands of families had been affected by the troubles. Losses are real. The pain was personal. I need not tell many people in this audience. Every person killed in the troubles left an empty chair at that dining room table and a hole in the heart that was never filled for the ones they lost. Peace was not inevitable. We can't ever forget that. There was nothing inevitable about it. As George Mitchell often said, the negotiations had, quote, 700 days of failure and one day of success. 700 days of failure and one day of success. But they kept going because George and all the many others never stopped believing that success was possible. And I want all of you to know, especially the young people in the audience today, and don't jump, okay? <laughs> Oh, I didn't see that all the way up there. <laughs> As my father would say, please excuse my back. I apologize. <laughs> but all kidding aside, the American people were with you, are with you. Every step of the way, it's real. Those of you who've been to America know that there is a, uh, there is a large population that is invested in what happens here, that cares a great deal about what happens here. Supporting the people of Northern Ireland, protecting the peace, preserving the Belfast Good Friday Agreement is a priority for Democrats and Republicans alike in the United States. And that is unusual today because we've been very divided on our parties. This is something that brings Washington together. It brings America together. I spoke about this with Northern Ireland's political leaders as well as the Taoiseach and our St. Patrick's Day celebration at the White House.